Hey everyone, and welcome to Work With Me. My name is Jessica Minhas, and today we're joined by a fellow actor, Philip Chorba. Nailed it. Yes. Okay, I'm <laughs> half Indian, so confession, the entire time before starting to film this, I kept saying Chopra, mm -hmm. but <laughs> Chorba. Nailed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Hungarian. Oh, it's Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Yeah. Well, Philip has been in a bunch of stuff. I was looking at your IMDb, mm -hmm. and you're just, you're kind of killing it right now as Thanks. an actor. Thank you. you said recently that you just transitioned from um, part-time acting to full-time acting, yeah. and in the last like what yeah. two years or so? Although I, correct, correct. I mean, I was I was approaching it as a full-time job. I was constantly like working and working. Yeah. 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 Well, right, the freelancer lifestyle. But uh, yeah, I was in residential rentals here in town, okay. Manhattan for like eight years, and then this past June, I was able to um, uh, just make just kind of make the jump. You know. Well, you had some exciting projects that sort of came down the line in the past like 24 months or so. Yeah, 2015 is kind of a monster year. Um, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, yeah. so Silver Linings Playbook was, was my first feature film. Uh, heck of a one to get, first feature film. Yeah. In. I played the role of Jordy Timmons. That was Jennifer Lawrence's creepy ex-boyfriend. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. What a fun part to play. A lot of fun, especially because I, you know, I normally play like, you know, amicable but slacker older brother. So you, like, you've been typecast already, you feel. Yeah, but then when that role came out, it was like, oh, maybe I'll get like all the scummy roles too. <laughs> How many days were you on set filming for that? Uh, a little less than a week. Okay, yeah, so in it, and out. Yeah, it was, it was cool. It was in Philly and... Um, I had callbacks for, for a smaller role, and I was thrilled about that uh, for just like a one-off line thing. Yeah. And I'm in the callback room, and it's the director, David Russell, and the producer. No pressure, though. Bruce Cohen. And I walk, but you know what? I like it, because I'm in the room with the decision makers. Whew, my hands start sweating just like Woo! thinking about that. Woo! Oh my gosh. Yeah. You must love, it sounds like you love the auditions, you love the thrill of it. Yeah, I love auditioning. It's fun. I mean... I do it often enough that I consider casting directors and casting assistants to kind of like be coworkers of mine. Because mm -hmm. like they want you to get the role. Because yeah. if you get the role, then they get paid and they look good. So they want you to perform. Uh, I was actually saw a clip on YouTube. Uh, I don't know in what capacity George Clinton was talking about it, but George was talking about how... What's George. George, my boy. Yeah. G. Clunes. Yeah. G. Clunes. No, we were... Uh, we were... <laughs> never. <laughs> Yeah, I was drinking you his never tequila, know. and I feel like I, I'm close. To... No, um, he was talking about how it was a very freeing realization for him once he realized that the people on the other side of the camera are are on your team. Yeah. I think he used the term gambling with house money. Okay. Which is kind of, you know, they want you to do well. They're not like, next. Yeah. They'll be like, well, this way. Okay, so take us back to the room. You're in there with the director, producer. Oh yeah, okay. You're going so, in for a smaller role. Yeah, for like tailgater number two. Okay. And I was thrilled. Okay. Callback, David Russell, you know, his film before that was The Fighter. It's, yeah, like, right? It's huge, yeah, amazing, huge stuff. amazing. Huge stuff. So I was super excited about that, and I'd known him since, you know, uh, I.R. Huckabees and Three Kings and all this great stuff. And, um, yeah, so he's in the room, and, and uh, we go through... The original scene, and it's and it's in a tailgate scene when they're at the Eagles game or whatever, and I do the line, and they're like, "Yeah, it's funny." I'm just kind of standing there, like in that awkward moment when it's over, but you're not sure if it's over, and you're kind of like, "Do I flex? Like, yeah. what do I do? Okay. Do I like turn to the side and be like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Always, uh, <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'm retrosexual. Clearly. No big Clearly. deal. Okay. No big deal. Um, yeah, so the director and the producer are kind of talking, like, pss, pss, pss. they're looking at me, and I'm all like, <laughs> and they're like, pss. and like, we're going to have you read for the role of Jordy Timmons. I'm like, what? You know, and in character naming, there's hierarchy, right? So generally speaking, tailgater number two is less important than tailgater number one. Right. Who's, in theory, less important than tailgater. Who's less important than Bob the tailgater? Mm -hmm. Who's less important than Bob? Mm -hmm. Who's less important than like Bob Johnson or whatever? So, like so to go from tailgater number two to Jordy Timmons, I'm like, what? Oh my goodness! So they hand me the sides, and 
sides, those of people in the audience who don't know, sides are, um, they don't give you the entire script, right? So what they'll usually do is, oh, here, okay, is um, it'll be like a little portion of mm -hmm. what you have to read. And it's like five lines or, or a scene or whatever. It's all you have to go off of. So they hand the sides to me and they're like ripped like almost in half. So clearly whoever <laughs> read for it before, I guess, didn't do so well. <laughs> because they're handing me the sides and I'm like, geez. And you usually get them earlier to prepare. But I had about, like, take all the time that you need. But you don't really want to take like two hours because what if they change something on set? They need to know that you can work right, quickly, right? Okay. So I just kind of glossed at it for three or four minutes. It's so just like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Whoa, no way. You went. Good to go. We started doing that. How, oh, wait. How long was the page? Like, how many lines did you sort of like scoop up? We, we did the, the scene that's in the movie. So and it's like a two minute scene with Bradley Cooper, myself, wow. and the actors playing Jennifer Lawrence's parents. So, and then we ran through it once, and then without me knowing, the casting director started improvising. So I just kind of rolled with it. So I'm improvising with the casting director, like she's playing Bradley Cooper's part, and I'm And then David Russell's like side coaching me. Side coaching, those of you who do not know, is an acting term for when we're in a, in a scene, someone's in our ears telling us to like, Lean forward, now say it again, get angry, now grab her, now whatever, and all these things. So I'm improvising and getting side coach at the same time. And it was just, you know, um, the audition ended, like I went off script even more, and the cast director's like, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm like, uh, what am I gonna do? What's this? And I point to it like there's a gun. And I'm like, there's no gun there. What if there was? <laughs> And I'll just like walk off. It's like walk out of frame. And they're like, what? That was so menacing, but awkward. Like, wow. I'm like, thanks. And this is at like 11.15 at night in Philadelphia. Wow. And I took the Bolt bus or Mega bus. Are they sponsors of the show? OK, good. Yeah, so, yeah. so, I, so I took it home. And I'm like frantically calling everyone. I'm calling my wife. I'm calling my acting coach. My agent, like, Tara, we killed it. We could have not done any better. If we don't get it, it's not our fault. Like, beep. So you knew in that moment that you were, like, pretty confident. I did, yeah. It, it, just, it just popped. It was just, it was just one of those, it was like a golf swing when you're like. Do you, do you right. have other moments in, like, auditions where you can think back, like, yeah, I knew I nailed it then, too, and I got it, or? Yes I, and I, no. I, yes I, and no. I, I hear mean, with actors, they sometimes tell you, like, um, don't worry about it. Don't overthink it because you never know what they're yeah. thinking on the opposite side yeah, of the well, table. Yeah, that's totally true. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely had some times where I've left it and been like, ugh. <laughs> well, hopefully the casting director won't completely blacklist me. Maybe good thing I've done good work for him in the past. And then gotten a call back. Yeah. You know? which is like a second interview. And then sometimes I've been like, <laughs> come on, just give me the money right now. <laughs> and then nothing. <laughs> you know, maybe the role got cut. Yeah. Or maybe they're like, you know, he said he's willing to shave, but I can't imagine what he looked like without a beard. So next, or like, you know, you never but know. But we can imagine what you look like without a beard because we can view that on IMDb, actually. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, great plug. <laughs> IMDb, search Philip <laughs> with two L's. <laughs> Chorba, not Chopra. Chopra. P -H -I <laughs> Philip Chopra, P H I L L I P C H O R B A. I am the second most popular Philip with two L's with C H on IMDb. Well done. The first guy is this guy, Philip Chabib, <laughs> who's like kind of my nemesis, but he doesn't know it. He's in all those like uh, dance competition movies. Oh, okay. And his ranking is just all these smoking Clearly, I can see mine. how it'd be like similar type. Yeah, we usually go out for the same things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But you have a clip on there, um, and you are with, what is that guy's name? I'm like blanking on the comedian's name. Louis C.K. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was season, it was the season five opener of Louis. Um, the role was called Guy Who Looks Like Louis. <laughs> and I've heard the comparison before. That's five. I know. And it's not Guy Who Looks Like Louis number two. Yeah, that's five. Yeah. Or just guy. Yeah. So super specific, like I'm feeling good about it. Yeah. So when I when the audition came through, I'm like, all right, if I don't get this, I should just retire. I should quit. 
So were you working at that time too, like kind of playing both sides? When? Yeah, we shot that like last February, so almost a year ago. Because what I love about your story is that like um, you've you've been like pretty determined to mm -hmm. make it work. You have a family. You're mm -hmm. married um, to your high school sweetheart. Yeah. And you have a, a hey, kid. Dawn. Um, Orson? Orson. Yeah, Orson. Yeah. And so you're a dad and you're a husband and you're an actor, which I think mm -hmm. a lot of people who want to pursue dreams are sort of like, that's not possible for me because I have all these responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But you have made it work and that is so cool to see how that transition happened just, you said, like a year and a half ago or so yeah. to full time. Yeah. And you've soared since I mean, then. I didn't get Silver Linings Playbook until I was 28. So six years of grind, grind yeah. straight grind. And hearing, what does that mean to like people who aren't in the business? What does the grind mean? Um, you know, doing mailings every month, going to open call auditions. Um, um, so you did mailings. Mm -hmm. Mailings are, can you explain what mailings sure. are? Sure. You find a list of all the casting heroes in New York City and you mail them pictures of you. Not like creepy. Headshots, yeah. <laughs> just like this is me drinking coffee with my robe. <laughs> No, it's like, uh, you know, your headshot and a postcard in the back would be like, hey, good news. This month I booked a commercial for, you know, the contact lens and it's good and you <laughs> see me and cheers. Call these people to book me. And then you send it. And there's like 200 some odd castingers in New York. So How like, many times would you do that? Ugh, I mean, every month. Every month? Yeah. Because I will hear some people say, like, oh, I want to be an actor, so I'm mm -hmm. going to a class here and there. I sure. may meet a casting director. But what you're describing, it sounds like a lot more yeah, devoted, a lot more yeah, intense. Yeah, yeah. And there's no one thing yeah. that will get you anywhere. <laughs> you know what Here's I, the good news. <laughs> hey, sorry, guys. Here's the truth. I wish someone told me this. Um, Save for a lot of hard work, though. It sounds like the hard work is what is A really lot of hard work off. and just... Um, yeah, just like super thick skin, being open to taking direction. Can you talk a little bit about the thick skin part? Like, oh yeah. What if you had to like? How did oh, you? Oh yeah. How did your? Let's skin... talk about skin thickness. Y yeah. Um, it just uh, just happens just hardened over time, like a diamond. <laughs> no, but what, what'll happen is, you know, it's like you're in the room, and this is especially true with commercials. With okay. commercials, you have to like resemble the product or you're like an aspirational version of who they're trying to sell the product to or whatever, right? So I'm a bigger guy, so you could see me in like a commercial for like Home Depot or something, but you never see me in a commercial for McDonald's because if you look at Mc McDonald's commercials, it's people who like, you didn't eat that, like shut up, <laughs> shut your face right now. You even know what a burger looks like. You're a lying liar who lies. And they're like, so, so they're super thin, right? So when you're in a commercial audition, you know, like, oh my goodness, there's this one take and I'm, and I'm gonna tie it into marketing and mailings. You're really gonna, you're gonna like this. I'm gonna be excited, okay. So I'm at a callback for a national commercial at a pretty big casting house in Manhattan. And, and I do the thing and like I said, it's that awkward moment where it's not over, but you don't know, it's kind of standing there like. So you're in the room. Mm-hmm. Yep, okay. And everyone's like eating their lunch like, yeah, we got, we got uh, Bill, Philip. All right, all right, Paul. Yeah, so, uh, uh, go ahead. And you're like, do it. And then it ends and I'm just kind of standing there and, and I couldn't even tell who was who because there's like eight people on the couch. I can't tell who's client, mm -hmm. who's director, who's casting director. And just to like set the scene here, that there are sometimes like 20 people. Yeah. In the room, yeah, and it is a small room. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like ten by fifteen, and there's a little like hot. handheld digital camera on a stand, yeah. and everyone's like kind of looking at you, but like checking their phones, just like, who's this? All right, yeah, uh, chicken salad sandwich. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, right here, right here. And I'm like, I've been sweating this moment for two days, and they're just like, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> so, so I'm done with the bit, and two people talk to each other, who in retrospect were probably the director and the client. And the director's like, <laughs> what do you, what do you think? You know? And the producer's like, he takes direction. They're just like, 
pretty well. Oh, wow. And the, the, the producer's like, yeah, but not the right look. And I'm like turning, I'm like sucking my gut in like, <laughs> how about now? Oh how about God. this look? Oh, and they're like, wow. yeah. He's like, no, oh, not the right look. He takes direction pretty oh well. So that's good. All right, Philip, thank you. And I leave, I'm like, I, beep. and I walk out the room and I didn't get it. So then I'd grown tired of sending out postcard mailings every month because it's like, it's, it's like 150 right? bucks yeah. in, in postage and mailing cost. And the and cards labor. are expensive. Yeah, and like you have to put on each stamp individually. You know, you can't like give it to them and be like, stamp this for me. They'll be like, you stamp it for yourself, sir, and are mail it. Are you just it. like sort of like my soul is like leaving me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just <laughs> like. <laughs> um, so I decided that the casting directors who have cast me before, I'm going to give them like, like some swag, right? So I got... Uh, a big canvas tote bag yeah. with my headshot printed on it. Amazing. And it said on the bottom, it said, Philip Chorba, with an exclamation point. Then my management at the time's contact information. And then the back was the quote. It says, takes direction, dot, 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 pretty well, <laughs> comma. So that's good. <laughs> and I give it to a cast directors with like a bottle of red wine and like a bar of dark chocolate or whatever. Wow. But who have cast me before and who I already yeah. had a rapport with. So I wasn't just like, hey, Ren person, casting director, thank you. I was just like, hey, Philip Trouba tote bag. What was the reaction typically? They loved it. It was great. We, we should have some of those with us today. I know. <laughs> well, I ran out of totes because like 20 bucks a pop to, like, to like get made. I wanna, I wanna so I had like seven or eight of them made. Chobra. I also, Chorba. I also Chorba. have given out beer koozies. Chorba. <laughs> so I've given out beer koozies with wow. my headshot on the bottom. Do wow. you know the director that said, like, um, takes direction or whatever? Have you ever seen him again? Maybe. I don't know. That's too bad. I mean, director for all guy, I know, he's, like, called me back. And, wherever you are. Yeah. Just know, I that I, again. just know that I still take direction well and that um, mm -hmm. I'm still available for work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you seem like you handle the pressure of all of these different variations so easily. Uh, I have my like, moments. Would you, I mean, was acting yeah. always it for you? Were you like one no, day? No, I didn't act until a sophomore year of college. When you were a kid, what did you want to be? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you were I, in high school, like, or... like my whole life, I wanted to be a princess. No, to all these people, you're like, like I wanted say to be a they, princess. Um. I say they wanted. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Okay, you and know. then and then sophomore year of college, what happens? Why acting? I was on the football team. I was a guard, which is the guy who snaps the ball at quarterback as a center, and then on his immediate left and right are the guards, so offensive linemen. So I didn't know that. And then next to that are tackles. Getting so O-line. Oh. O-line. And um, now I know. I didn't know. I thought I sprained my ankle, but turns out I broke it. Oh. And the dorm that I was living in sophomore year was next door to the theater. And Union College, where I went undergrad, has um, trimesters, so it's three courses per term and three 10-week terms. And I needed a third course. And it was icy, because it's capital region, it's in Schenectady, New York, like brick, super cold. I don't want to walk that far and fall and sprain my ankle again, the theater is next. Or break it. Yeah, again, because <laughs> it healed all weirdly. So I'm looking through like, you know, through like the registrar course, and there's this course called Voice for the Stage, but it mentions that there's a prerequisite. So you have to take a course to get into that, mm -hmm. or you can talk to the professor and they'll like maybe let you in. So I contacted the professor. I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about taking your course. Um, she's like, all right, well, meet with me and we'll see if we hit it off and I'll decide if I'll let you take the class. And I'm like, all right, but is there singing in this class? It's called Voice for the Stage. I don't want to sing. She's like, no. It's like vocal warm-ups. It's like, yeah, it's like doing the scales and just getting ready for theater acting. Okay. So I was like, cool. Um, so it's like voice, it's like voice. Yeah, you're just basically doing vocal warm-ups and super important stuff, as I found out later, but at the time it was, it was all Greek to me. I was just like, yeah. You know, she was just like, you know, it's the uh, Alexander technique. Oh, and that's also about pike posture too, right? Yeah, as I slouch. 
Where you like let your neck or... come forward or yeah, something? Yeah, and it's all these, it's like, you know, you, you, uh, you know, do like tongue twisters. You do like red leather, yellow leather, red leather, <laughs> yellow leather to like get your tongue and mouth agile, like any muscle system or whatever. So, so I'm meeting up with the professor, name is Patsy Colbert, and he's talking to her, and she's, and she's just like, I don't know why, but she's just like, you know, I like you, and uh, yeah, you're in the class, great. I'm like, sweet, thanks. And you had to audition for the play, but you didn't have to accept a role. Like anyone who's in the th okay. a theater class had to go out. You mm -hmm. don't take the role, but you have to audition for mm -hmm. it. And I had missed a couple classes because I had just joined a fraternity and I may have been out drinking multiple late may nights. May or may not. Or may not have. Right. Truth is, I don't remember because I was so drunk. No, but. <laughs> no, but <laughs> true story. Uh, true story. And. Uh, Orson. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It could be whoever you want to be unless it's missing classes. And. Um, yeah, so when it came time to audition, I'm just like, you know what, I should be open to accepting the role so I don't fail this class. But I was not expecting to get a role, and I got a role, and I'm auditioning against all these people who've been acting oh, in no. high school. Oh, no, that guy. And I just, just got... What was the play? It's called The African Company Presents Richard III. Wow, yeah. So okay. it's historical fiction, uh, early 19th century. So the rule about Broadway shows is that you can't have is that if Broadway has a production of, say, Hamlet, there can't be a secondary production of Hamlet in the area unless the original theater says it's cool to do so, mm -hmm. right? So in the early 19th century, there is this theater company called the African Company, they're African Americans, or Caribbean, African American, I don't know, and they were putting on Richard III. But Edwin Booth of the Booth family, John Wilkes Booth family, um, was putting on Richard III. So I played like the racist Broadway theater owner. I think James, Pr no, uh, Stephen Price. Stephen Price I had like mutton chops. I was like, I. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did you book a, a play right out of the gate, mm -hmm. kind of it, kind of accidentally, because it was sort of like Completely I need to accidentally. Like, fill this. Completely this accidentally. becomes like you are also the villain, mm -hmm. and this becomes. I had like, to learn an accent. It was a period accent. Which uh, kid did you? Which is like. Do you remember any of it? I mean, I remember like how to do the accent, but I don't remember the. So, yeah, so basically, New York City aristocracy talk kind of half British, half like English at the time. Yeah. So we wouldn't just talk like, "Hey, or we like, we like, oh, hello, and how are you today?" Like, it's not quite British. Wow. It's not quite American. It's like yeah. kind of in between. So, which is good because that's as much of so a you, British so accent as I can actually. Let do. me just like, so you're the villain, and you have to play an accent, and you book it in front of all these people who have been doing. Theater mm -hmm. their whole lives. They're like, like, oh, this jock. <laughs> Ooh. Yes, he's exactly. in a fraternity and exactly. he's a jock and he beat our oh, school. Man. We can't have anything. Oh man. And then, but I really loved it, and I wound up doing like seven or eight plays. Wow. And at the end of, did you have any idea what you thought you might major in prior to that? Um, going in, I, I mean, not not really. I mean, I thought it maybe like classics because. You know, my father's like big into classical history and oh, I see. ancient Greek, ancient Roman, stuff like that. I thought about that. But then ancient Greek just crushed me. I think we have to wrap Oof. pretty soon here. Okay. But I, um, I could get carried away with like all the tales of your me career. Too. <laughs> they are so funny and you have such a positive attitude with it, which I think is rare for the business. I think the fact that you um, remain so upbeat and like not cynical and kind of Elbowy, I guess, is the way I describe some actors. Yeah. Just like their elbows are out yeah. constantly, is really, really I refreshing be heard. and exciting you know? too. This time, and um, just so our viewers know, what is coming up for you? What can we see you in? Sure, I'm in theaters right now in the movie Concussions. How cool is it that Will's you get to say that? Super cool. Super just cool. say it again for. I'm in theaters right now, a film starring so cool. Will Smith called Concussion, where I play one of Will Smith's lab technicians. Tech number two. How long were you Not as important that? as tech number one. Not as important as Bob the Tech. <laughs> hey, but you're in there. But still. I was on set for two weeks. Oh, how fun. Filmed in Pittsburgh. And my father's family is from the South Hills of Pittsburgh. So it was great to hang out with all of them. Yeah. Um, I have an episode of Law and Order coming out February 10th. Which means that you are an official New York I'm actor. I'm officially, new, yeah. I get my New York actor card now. 
And uh, yeah, and I did some motion capture work for a video game company. Um, so I'm going to be in a video game in some capacity as me walking around. And, um, uh, and you, then you, ha yeah. you have that commercial coming out. Mm -hmm. We were talking. For BioTrue contact lens solution and you can IMDB me and check out my episodes of Broad City, The Nick, The Following, Louis, Blue Bloods, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Silver Lines Playbook, and uh, cool indie films I've done like Yellowtown Monster, Man with a Gun, just fun stuff like that and a bunch of commercials. So So even though like you're you're mm -hmm. you're super popular right now. Um, I mean, you're in theaters. <laughs> yeah, so you're in theaters. Um, you're still like it just a, you know, you're a dad, you're a husband, you're making it work. Yeah, and I have, yeah. you know, and it's like we never know if I'm going to be like in L.A. for two or three days or on set or whatever. So if there's something that needs to be done around the apartment, like I get it done that day. Like if you, know, if you need to like fix a drawer or something, you got to do it then because, I mean, I'm doing like ADR, like voice looping for our Law & Order episode on Wednesday. Yeah, can we come? Sure, hang out. For like, I totally want to do that. It's like, like do not arrest me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cha Ching. Okay, and when Just is that? It. When is that website coming up so we can purchase the tote bag? Do I have a? I don't even have a website. I should get a website. <laughs> Philip's website. You have a great be, one. No, thank you. Mine is imdb.me forward slash Philip Chorba. That's my like vanity. IMDb account. But. but we're gonna work on it so that uh, Philip has a real website that we can purchase yeah. the tote bag from. Um, or in, koozies. In, can we say like in the next two months? Sure, why not? Okay. Okay, Philip, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us on Work With Me. I'm Jessica Manos. We'll see you next time.